Hey y'all, Kitty Cat here. Recently at the grocery store, I noticed so many different beverage choices. So I thought I would make this video on electrolyte drinks, energy drinks, those powdered flavored packets that you add to water, maybe a little bit of brewed stuff, some juices, some milk. We're gonna cover a little bit of everything. This video is intended for people with late stage kidney disease, those needing a low sodium, low potassium, and low phosphorus dry at restriction. Let's get into it. First up, we're gonna talk about electrolyte drinks. And I just wanted to remind you, we're looking for anything that has less than 200 milligrams of sodium, less than 200 milligrams of potassium, and has no added phosphorus in the ingredient list. That's no words with P-H-O-S in it. If it meets these criteria, it is okay for late stage kidney disease. Of course, I'm not gonna be talking about fluid restrictions. All right, this Gatorade, the serving size is one bottle. However, the bottle is two and a half cups. You might not be planning on having that much to drink, which is a good thing because this Gatorade has 270 milligrams of sodium. Potassium, 80 milligrams, that's okay. The real kicker is the added PHOS phosphorus in the ingredient list. I have a lot of patients that work outside, they're doing construction all day, they're drinking Gatorade and their phosphorus comes back astronomical. So please avoid Gatorade and avoid its cousin, Powerade, same situation. And I've noticed this Propel water, it's an electrolyte powder drink, which sounds really cool. You can add it to a bottle of water and have that, but Again, it's got a lot of sodium in it. It is okay with the potassium, but the kicker is the added phosphorus. So avoid the Propel water too. What kind of electrolyte drink would you be able to have? Well, I'm glad you asked. How about Pedialyte? And I know you guys are gonna think I'm crazy at first. It says Pedialyte has 370 milligrams of sodium. What? It has 280 milligrams of potassium. I've lost my mind, but guess what? There's no added phosphorus in the ingredient list. And here's the kicker. Okay, the serving size is one and a half cups. It's 12 fluid ounces. What you can do is take one and a half cups of this Pedialyte, mix it with another one and a half cups of just plain water. So you have like three cups of water. Take that to work with you if you're working outside. You sip on it all day long. You're stretching out that sodium, stretching out that potassium. A much better idea. Your phosphorus is gonna look great when you have it checked again. Of course, if you are just doing afternoon gardening or maybe you're doing a little basketball game, you don't need Pedialyte. But if you are working outside in the Florida heat all day long, eight hours a day, you might actually need a little bit of this Pedialyte. Next, let's talk about the flavor packets that you can add to water, like this pink lemonade crystal light. It has no sodium in it. Potassium is not listed on the ingredient list because there is nothing to remark on. There's not enough potassium to even comment on it. And looking at the ingredients, I don't see any word that has PHOS in it. So this crystal light is a winner. However, it does have some other cringy ingredients. You might see aspartame. You might see artificial color. I mean, who needs that stuff? And uh, just to show you something different, here's a different crystal light, just a plain lemonade. This one does have sodium in it. It does have 130 milligrams of potassium. Yes, that's totally fine. But if you're gonna be drinking this all day long, it will add up. Okay, what about these Skittles? I did have a patient drinking these little flavor packets of Skittles. And the most sodium is in the mango flavor. That's nothing, 25 milligrams. The potassium, only 35 milligrams. Here's the kicker. Almost every flavor has added phosphorus. This stuff is BAD bad. What I do appreciate is this True Lemonade. So if you're looking for a flavor enhancer, I would try True Lemonade. It comes in not just the plain lemonade flavor, it's got strawberry lemonade, it's got a blue, crazy raspberry one. It's really good, they taste great. It's got no sodium in it, no potassium to speak of. And when I look at the ingredient list, there's no added phosphorus, but the ingredients are not scary to me. It's got crystallized lemon, cane sugar, some natural flavor, a little bit of stevia, some beta carotene. Eh. Okay, what about soft drinks or colas or pop or soda pop? Or if you're like me where I grew up, we called everything a Coke. If you went out to dinner, you would say, oh, what kind of Coke do you have? Oh, we have Mountain Dew and we have Dr. Pepper and we have Sprite. 
I mean, even Pepsi was a Coke. Anyway, looking at Coca-Cola, it has 45 milligrams of sodium. A lot of people tell me, wow, cola is really high in sodium and mm, not really. 45 milligrams is not that much. It doesn't have any potassium in it to speak of. It's not even listed. And in the ingredients though, it has phosphoric acid. This stuff is so bad. I have patients that will just tell me, oh, I only have one can of soda, uh, maybe a couple of times a week. That's all that it takes to make your phosphorus high. Trust me, avoid this stuff. And the same goes for other dark sodas, such as your Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, and any generic cola that you're gonna get at the store. You've probably heard that light color sodas are better for you. And let's check out this one, it's a Fanta Orange. It has 45 milligrams of sodium, no kind of potassium in it, and no added phosphorus in that ingredient list. I'm here to tell you, it was just one or two years ago when I was looking at Orange Fanta, and yes, it did have added phosphorus in it. I told my patients to avoid it. Now it seems to have been reformulated without the phosphorus. And if you don't believe me, check out this old ingredient list. This is a wonderful thing. I feel like food manufacturers are finally getting the message that we don't need all this extra phosphorus, but I don't think it's from the United States. I give credit to Canada, the EU, the UK. They have a lot more tight regulations than we do. And I think that they're wanting to offer these same products in those areas and they have to tweak things a bit in order to comply with the, the regulations there. So I think we're benefiting from it. Okay, these are some other light colored sodas. Orange Crush, Grape Crush, Mountain Dew, your ginger ales, your root beers, and uh, cream sodas. Mm -hmm. Next up, what about some juices? If you don't already know, orange juice is really high in potassium. Check out this one, 640 milligrams. Ouch, that's a lot of potassium. <laughs> You're better off having apple juice, cranberry juice, or grape juice and sticking to just a half a cup portion size. But what about those juices that aren't really juice, like these Welsh's juices up here? I think they contain a little bit of juice, just enough to call themselves juice, but not much. The uh, highest sodium that I saw was 60 milligrams for a container, which is a cup. And there is not a significant amount of potassium in it at all. That tells me there's really no fruit juice in this. And when I look at the ingredient list, I don't see any added phosphorus. So actually this Welsh's fruit juice would fit our bill. However, there are some cringy ingredients in this too, like high fructose corn syrup. I'm not saying this is a healthy drink for you. I'm just saying that it would be better. <laughs> what about coconut water? I'm sure a lot of you have heard that coconut water is good for you. A serving size would be one cup and it's got 40 milligrams of sodium, that's nothing. And it's got 470 milligrams of potassium in it. That's a lot of potassium. Shut the front door, escape out the back. Do not drink this stuff. Okay, moving on to milks. Silk soy milk is the first one I wanted to show you because we all know that cow's milk is high in potassium and phosphorus. But um, silk soy milk has 80 milligrams of sodium. That's okay. Potassium, 300 milligrams. Ooh, that's a lot. And looking at the... Um, Oh, yes, guys, this one, this, this food label has phosphorus listed on it. And I just wanted to say, if you see phosphorus listed in milligrams on a food label, ignore it. Not all phosphorus is created equally. Natural phosphorus tends to have a larger amount of milligrams than this artificially added phosphorus, which is a lower amount of milligrams, but those lower amount of milligrams are still potent. Their absorbency into your blood is 80 to 100%. They are a real problem. That's, that's where we get 50% of our phosphorus intake from. And if we cut that stuff out, 90% of us would have perfect phosphorus. Okay, what about Almond Breeze? Let's check this one out. Sodium content, 170 milligrams, that's all right. Potassium, 160 milligrams, that's all right. And looking at the ingredient list, I don't see any added phosphorus. This one is a winner. But that does not mean that all almond milks are winners. Check out this one. Oh, it looks healthy. It says organic on the front. It's got 180 milligrams of sodium in it. That's more. And when I look at the potassium, only 30. That's, that's a lot less. I don't know what happened there. And oh, there's added phosphorus. This almond milk, not good. And I just wanted to show you that because a lot of people say, kitty cat, well, can, is almond milk better than soy milk? Is it better than coconut milk? And the answer is, it depends. 
you have to read the food label of every single brand because they have different ingredients in them. I can't give you a flat answer. What about hot beverages? If you're brewing your own tea or you're grinding your own coffee, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to worry that there's a little bit of potassium and phosphorus in the coffee, a little bit of phosphorus in most teas, but if you're just having a cup, it's not a big deal, especially if you're having it with a meal because you're taking the phosphorus binder with your meal, you really don't have to worry that much. But what if you decided you want one of these fancy bottled coffees like this Dunkin' Ice Mocha? Okay, sodium, not much, that's okay. Potassium, 600 milligrams. You don't wanna drink this stuff. And it has added phosphorus in it. Oh, B-A-D. Okay, what about this Starbucks Frappuccino? We have 140 milligrams of sodium, that's cool. And we have 677 milligrams of potassium. Again, it looks like these bottled coffees are a terrible idea. Okay, now on to the reason you probably decided to watch this video, energy drinks. Energy drinks are really popular right now, especially with young people, and this one is called Celsius. Let's read, let's do a quick review of this food label. Um, sodium, zero grams. Oh, that's perfect. Looking at the ingredient, I don't see potassium listed at all. That tells me that the potassium is not even significant enough to list. I'm looking at the ingredient list. I don't see any word with PHOS in it. All right, this fits the bill, doesn't it? Oh, but wait a minute. Look at all this other stuff in here. There's, a, there's like a multivitamin worth of stuff in here. Anytime you see a product that has added vitamin D, added calcium, added this vitamin, that might have been, check it out with your dietitian or your nephrologist first to see if it's okay for you. You can actually overdose on some of these um, supplements. But looking at this list, it's just a bunch of B vitamins with a little bit of vitamin C and a little bit of chromium. I'm not worried about it. But what about this word? What in the heck is taurine? Well, taurine is an amino acid that the human body creates on its own, meaning that we don't need to eat it, we make it ourselves. However, it's thought that maybe it's conditionally essential, which means that under periods of stress, your body might not be making enough of its own taurine and supplementing with taurine might give some kind of a good effect. In fact, there are a lot of studies out there I've found showing anti-inflammatory effects of this taurine and benefits on exercise performance. And it's not just on this cardiovascular system. Anti-inflammatory is good on like every system. So sounds like taurine is a winner, right? But what about taurine supplementation in people with late stage kidney disease? Check out this study. I'm gonna read from it. In general, human patients, I love it, human patients, with chronic renal failure have reduced plasma and muscle intracellular concentrations of taurine. Okay, sounds like most people with late stage kidney disease don't have that much taurine. However, an open label, non-randomized trial of taurine supplementation at 100 milligrams per kilogram per day, that's a reasonable amount, in 10 hemodialysis patients resulted in extremely high taurine levels in plasma and muscle. Uh-oh. Extremely high levels of taurine in the blood. That does not sound like a good idea, right? Well, to add a little bit more confusion to this, it seems that patients that have a higher amount of taurine in their blood report decreased fatigue. So maybe it does help a little bit. I really don't know, guys. I can't tell you one way or the other if it's okay to have this taurine. And because of that, don't do it. Wait until there's more studies. I'm, I'm betting there's gonna be a lot more studies because this taurine looks really exciting. So what else does Celsius have in it? We have guarana and we have caffeine. Well, both of those are caffeine. This bottle has about 200 milligrams of caffeine in it, which is equivalent to about two cups of coffee. And let me see, glucoronolactone. What in the heck is glucoronolactone? Well, it's a type of carbohydrate. And there's been a lot of worry, especially internationally, about the combination of taurine, caffeine, and this glucoronolactone stuff and what it does to the body. 
Okay, let me read a little bit of this too because it's pretty exciting. In general, the evidence correlates energy drinks with significant increase in the odds of insomnia, anxiety, depression, impulsivity, and poor academic performance, among others. While frequent energy drink consumption generates stimulation, that's nervousness and cardiovascular, hypertension, bone density loss, osteoporosis, low psychological, physical, educational, and overall well-being, among other consequences. Acute energy drink consumption not only generates a caffeine overdose, but has also been identified as an indicator in the use and abuse of other psychoactive substances and risky behaviors. The combined consumption of energy drinks with alcoholic drinks is known to generate, among other effects, a decreased sense of drunkenness. And okay, I think we've all heard those stories about people that um, are drinking a Red Bull and then they're having a beer and they're drinking a Red Bull and they're having a whiskey and before you know it, they're in the emergency room. And Europe is looking to really crack down on these energy drinks by banning them outright or suggesting that the manufacturers make the serving container a lot smaller because people are drinking way more than is recommended. Usually the bottle will tell you, don't drink more than two of these bottles every day, but I guess young people are drinking a lot more than that. And if you like scary bedtime stories, check out this study over here that I found done in rats. So they took this, the whole bunch of rats, they had a control group, they had a group that they overdosed on caffeine, a group that they gave a whole bunch of taurine to, and then they had this group. They gave it a combination of taurine, the glucuronolactone stuff, and this gluconolactone, which those two glue words, they're used interchangeably in different um, energy drinks, so they had both of them in there. And... Uh, when they looked at performances and, and weird behaviors of these rats, the rats that were given the combination were really messed up, y'all. Way more messed up than the taurine group, way more messed up than the group that was really high on caffeine. So bottom line, I think these drinks are probably okay if you had healthy kidneys and you just had one drink a day. But if you have kidney disease, I am very worried about the buildup of these substances in your body. I would just say avoid it for now. Okay, what about a different energy drink like Red Bull? Ooh, right away I see it's got too much sodium in it. There's no potassium in it. There's no added phosphorus in it. It does have taurine, but it doesn't have any of those glucoronolactone thing in it. That's good. Okay, and then there's this one, the Monster Energy Drink. Wow, this is a big can. And uh, it's suggesting that the serving size is only half of a can, not, not the whole thing, but it's a tab top. So what are you gonna do? Get out some saran wrap and wrap it around the top and stick it in the fridge and have the other half the next day? I don't think so. I think everyone's gonna drink the whole can, maybe throw out a little bit. But if you have the whole can, you would be getting 370 milligrams of sodium, way too much. And I just wanted to point out, you'd be getting 54 grams of carbohydrate from sugar. That's like a whole meal's worth of carbohydrate from sugar. And, uh, oh, no potassium, no added phosphorus, but it has the tyrene and the glucoronolactone thing in it. So between the, sh the sugar, the sodium, and these stimulants, I believe the Monster Energy Drink is the winner of badness. That's it for this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you need more videos like this in your life, please subscribe. This is Kitty Cat saying goodbye and I will see you next time.